Welcome back to Body Harvest. Where the bodies are harvested and the points don't matter. <laughs> yeah, the points are a bit archaic in this game. Well, you know, it was a thing they did in Nintendo games at the time. Well, I mean, I think they did it more just Nintendo games. Yeah, I think um, DMA were just coming off of their um, long string of Amiga designing jobs, so... Yeah, because I think I remember Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2 still used points. I know Grand Theft Auto 1 did, I'm not sure about 2. Yeah, one definitely did. Yeah. Because if you got, like, a huge point string in a row, like, it would pop up on the screen, Goranga, or whatever it was. <laughs> I believe progress was uh, points-based in that game as well. I think you're right. That game was kind of strange, but it was pretty fun. Yeah, it was a sloppy mess, but <laughs> I've had the theory that, um, because it came out in 96, and this game, or rather 97, and this game was finally released after being shelved in 96, mm. after Grand Theft Auto... Perhaps Grand Theft Auto put uh, DMA on the on the map in a big way, which led to this game finally getting released. Oh yeah, more than likely, because the... well, they were on the map before, because the first game they... maybe not the first game they did, but they did Lemmings. Yeah, Lemmings was a big deal, but it sort of made them seem like kid-friendly developers. Well, they had, a, they had a couple other games going at the time, like there was the one with... Uh, I know they had a couple that were... I'm trying to remember the names of them. It was just this, you know, huge, bloody, gory game. I remember I'm watching... I've been watching Eyeball's Lemmings LP, and they have a couple of crossover levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that might have been Menace, their very first game. That sounds right. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, attempted goriness. Apparently the bugs are taking it personally this time. Yeah, this is a continuation of, um, Black Adam saying that, uh... He's really going to kill us this time. So basically, Black Adam's being a big old jerk face. Yeah, no kidding. And, uh, I don't know, are, are the bugs taking it personally, or is, uh, is Black Adam taking it personally? It really seems like the latter. Bugs have not shown a very high degree of sentience. It really does, because, I mean, like, the bugs have mostly seemed to, you know, go on this whole feeding frenzy thing, but I feel like I don't know, like, there's there's drama and there's plotting here that I'm I don't know what are yet. And I'm and I'm mildly interested. Yeah, the full picture has not been revealed. I am mildly interested, I'll admit that. This might be the best plot of any N sixty four game. <laughs> well, I don't know. I played quite a few N sixty four games. Me too. And I think you're right. Plot is not <laughs> a very strong point, yeah. <laughs> well no, that's not true. They had uh, Resident Evil two on the N sixty four. Or does that yeah. not count because it was a port? Technically a port, technically not a very good plot, in my opinion. Oh, uh, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> it was about to happen eventually. <laughs> um, a big part of this game's plot, though, is that um, the bugs first attacked in 1916 in Greece. Right. And uh, after all the genetic material they collected from eating everybody in Greece, they evolved, became much, much more powerful. Yeah, the, the mutants. And possibly much smarter. Hmm. Yeah. So maybe every 25 years after they process all of the humans they eat, they uh, become a lot stronger and smarter. Well, now I'm sitting here, sitting here wondering, um, maybe your humans and dead meters are getting pretty high there. Yeah, it's turned red. It's, it's bad news. That's not, that's not bueno at all. I'm sitting here wondering, um, so is the plot of the game that the bugs, uh, they, they attacked in 1916. Mm -hmm. And as they were going... That was going, first contact. Yeah, that was first contact. As they were going forward, it led to this uh, reality where Adam is going back in time to prevent them from attacking in 1916. It led to a reality where they continued attacking every 25 years because they live on a comet that has a 25-year orbit. Right. That, at which point it passes by Earth. Mm -hmm. So every 25 years they set up a perimeter around a large area. Yeah, the yeah the big spooky perimeter, yeah. Mm -hmm. And each time they become exponentially more powerful so as to destroy that area more easily. Yeah. And then as of 2016, humanity is extinct. And uh, there's about 100 people left living on a uh, colony off-planet. And uh, 
at the very beginning of the game, the aliens invade that too and destroy it. So that only uh, Daisy and Adam are left. Okay, now since since Adam did his business in 1916, are the bugs supposed to be... See, now I'm, now I'm thinking about all these different ways you can do time travel plot lines. <laughs> <laughs> As did they when they were making this game. That You're actually um, touching on a discrepancy in the game, which is that we prevented the Greece invasion from being successful, but the bugs still got more powerful. Yeah, so now I'm sitting here thinking, hold on, are they are they tackling this time travel business like Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit questionable, but uh, perhaps the bugs would be completely unstoppable at this level if we hadn't uh, prevented the Greece invasion. Well, I don't know if they'd be unstoppable at this level, wouldn't they have taken on more of the uh, more of the world than just America? I say just America during uh, <laughs> during what the 19 what'll it be 1966. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe everybody was too high. Yeah, who knows? 66, wasn't that uh, Lyndon B. Johnson? Possibly? Not so hot in my history. I think it's around that time frame. It was before Nixon. Uh, might have been around Kennedy. Possibly just after Kennedy. Yeah. Johnson sounds you know, right. You know, JFK was killed in 63, so... Yeah, so it would have been Johnson, because he got re-elected afterwards. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Well, actually, I think that... I only knew that because of another time travel story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen King. Oh, Stephen King, you wily rascal. <laughs> you designer of brilliant plots and horrible executor of those plots. Something like that. I remember <laughs> reading a... Uh, I forget who said it, but, you know, they, they say that, you know, writers should always write what they know about, which probably explains why so many of... Uh, so many of Stephen King's protagonists are drunk writers from Maine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he took that a little too literally. <laughs> Black Adam's back, and angrier than ever. So he was saying... So I, I, caught the, I caught the first and last bit, but I didn't catch the middle bit. He's saying the men are his, and you'll never be able to... Oh, that's a, that's a battle dam. Mm-hmm. Is that, is that a goddamn? <laughs> well, it's um, insurmountable, much like God is, so... <laughs> Is it really insurmountable, or are you just saying it's insurmountable? We can't get through it by any uh, standard means of our, uh, of our own. I've tried um, jumping off of the boat and firing the rocket launcher at it, and unsurprisingly, that does not work. Yeah, no dice, huh? Wow. And that is Black Adam himself firing uh, our own tri-spinner at us. Ooh, what a jerk. Can you kill him? Yeah. We can shoot him. I'm trying to do it now, but it's difficult because he's uh, on top of the dam limits preventing me from hitting him. He has the high ground, Anakin. Adam. I landed one shot on him so far. He has the high ground, Adamkin. <laughs> yes, I'm glad I stopped talking long enough to let you get that in. I, I felt like it needed to happen. <laughs> you were right. So the Troy Spinner, that was the weapon from last level, right? Correct, it was our special alien weapon from Greece. So hold we on. could not take with us. So this jerk gets to take weapons between levels. But you don't. That or he's going on his own um, open world adventure through this world and he's collecting uh, alien weapons instead of human weapons like we are. Ah, so you think it might be dueling open worlds. Very well could be. Ah, huh. it's like dueling banjos but with a lot more implications towards the timeline. Yeah, then it would be awesome if we unlock a new game plus where we play as Black Adam's story after that. Who is that guy? He's like you, but black. Good question. And they even named it Blackness Harbor. <laughs> yep. So what's with your what's with your boat here? It's going a little going a little wacky. Yeah, I think it travels faster in reverse than in forward. Oh, so it's like uh, over the road truckers, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> what a... <laughs> Maybe this is where they get the idea from. <laughs> Very possible. We were lucky to escape with our lives because if he blows up this airboat, we have to return to the uh, Alpha Command in order to. Um, yeah, restore the boats. Yeah, I was sitting there getting a little worried because you were taking some, uh, you were taking some hits. Yep, he could have killed me there. Yeah, because you get to imagine if your boat gets blown up in the water, you probably won't be able to make it to Alpha Command. No, we would have drowned. That would have been. Uh, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, obvious. You don't seem to be having too much luck fighting Black Adam on his own terms. So, I mean, why fight fair when you can fight dirty? Yep, definitely, it is unwise to fight him there. Especially because victory doesn't actually uh, yield anything. 
So you're supposed to get that on the boat and then commandeer the boat? Yes, actually. Um, this tripped me up for a long time the first time I got to this stage because I couldn't find this door. Mm. Blends in kind of well. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. Like, it's it's kind of like the uh, extra doors in Banjo-Kazooie. You never see those coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which we're also on a, uh, a freighter of this sort. What kind of seaman are you? You're the worst seaman I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. Eh, eh, eh. We're a superhero than the superhero seaman. What are you waiting for? Snap to it, lad. Chop, chop. Yeah, he's conscripted us very quickly. Shouldn't you be saying I I them like a proper seaman? Yeah, if we said anything, then we would definitely be saying I I. But we don't. We're silent protagonists. It's true. Man, that struggle's too real. Collectibles are back, finally. It's oh, been yeah. two stages since we saw Weapon, weapon crystals? crystals? Yeah, I'd. I completely forgot about those things. Uh, those yeah, are easy to forget. Those are for the alien weapon? Correct, yeah. We'll okay. One more and we'll have our own alien weapon. Ooh, is it going to be fancy? Eh, it's going to be something. Is it going to give Black Adam alien weapon envy? Probably. Do you know if he's going to show up with it in America just to say, Hey, look, I got one too. You're not special. I would be very unsurprised if that were the case. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe Black Adam will die in America. Probably not. Yeah, it's unlikely. No smoking or naked flames. Only clothed flames allowed. Indeed. It's the common sense sign. <laughs> well, you know, it's important. You wouldn't want to have unclothed flames. This is, a, this is a kid's game. Yeah, exactly. It's only rated T for teen. Yeah, and I mean, teenagers may be ready for violence, but they're not ready for nakedness. <laughs> Famously. At least in America. That's that's an, that's a very American thing, yes. Yep. Watch a man's head get chopped off. Yeah, you're good. Nakedness. Ooh, let's not get too swift here, Johnny. Yeah. You know, old American hypocrisy. <laughs> oh, somebody might see a booby. That'd be terrible. A one-way trip. Oh no, is the captain going down with his ship? Yep. Oh, <laughs> Captain Ahab. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even attacking a white whale. Come on, Ahab. Eh, something of a white whale. Eh, it's not a white whale, it's a black atom. It's metaphorical. Is he at least going to fire these strange torpedoes that fire more like guided, unguided missiles? <laughs> not at all. So that way he can properly damn the torpedoes? Nope, just a kamikaze. At the last moment, Black Adam's going to despawn himself. Well, of course, that's how you survive in the long run. Yeah, he does exactly the same thing if you shoot him to death. Oh, so you can shoot him to death. Yep, but uh, as soon as his health bar empties out, he teleports to safety. So he's cheating. Oh yeah, 100%. That clever bastard. He's already working on his uh, I cheat profile. <laughs> he's on New Game Plus Plus. He's got a leg up on us. You gonna let him take you out like that? Eh, yeah, for now. Although we've won. I mean, he's out of here. We get to continue with our mission. <laughs> here we are, like, oh man, look who's running away. Bye, Adam. It's not a contest. It's not a race, but you're losing. Woo! Spring break! <laughs> we did have to switch to our uh, new airboat. One that will not, you know, explode at the slightest touch of a bug's slithery tendril. Yeah. And we're likely to get struck with a few slithery tendrils in the near future. That would be unfortunate. Yeah, because I imagine you're still uh, you're still making way down the waterway. There's still the potential for danger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can't get back without the airboat, which is why they leave us a uh, backup one. Oh, and there's the plane. Wasn't that what the uh, guy was calling you? The warrior was talking about. You're gonna need a boat or a, a some sort of airboat to get to the uh, to get to the processor or wherever. Yeah, a lot of people have told us that we need a plane to uh, get to the temple specifically. That's where they want us to go. Yeah, because I remember the guy was saying something about wings. Yeah, the witch hag told us that we need wings to get to uh, the fire temple. And the other guy said, get some wings and go to the other temple as well. I don't know how they get to their own holy place without uh, planes. Red Bull hasn't been invented yet, so... 
Yeah, I could see how this could be difficult. Yep. It's a tragedy of lacking Red Bull. <laughs> So I'm curious, is the, uh, does the Harvester Wave that happens here wait for until after you have uh, blown open the dam, or if you screw around, will it, will it possibly pop up? Yeah, as far as I know, it always happens immediately after you open the dam. Yeah, it always happens immediately, but I'm wondering if it's, uh, like, if you screw around, you can't figure out, well, how do I get in the dam? Will, it, will the Harvester Wave pop up regardless? Yeah, I've screwed around for a very, very long time, and I'm pretty sure the Harvester Wave never showed up. I think that bug was wearing sunglasses. Yeah, the Goliaths definitely wear sunglasses. Oh man, the future's so bright, they gotta wear shades. No kidding. In this case, the past, but... <laughs> they were talking about their future, they are like, Oh man, I can't wait till 25 years from now. It's gonna be great. Yeah, the future's bright as hell for them. <laughs> well, technically, they can't wait until 75 years from now, but, you know, semantics. Mm -hmm. Every 25 years, they get a big meal. No, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of frame rate there. Too many too many low polygon civilians flailing around in front of a house. Yeah, actually, those indoor areas specifically have weird frame rate issues. No, oh, huh? Hmm. Weird. Yeah, it's those specific ones. Those ones that are a little, um, you know, uh, soldiers' quarters. Mm. Yeah, and they all have a bunch of chests with health in them. Everything does go a little slower in the military, so that might explain it. <laughs> Take your word for it. I have special inside knowledge. We're all stupid. <laughs> so special weapon, was that the rocket launcher? I believe it was. Well, the special weapon ammo is for the alien weapon. Oh, as soon okay. as that starts showing up, that means you have access to the alien weapon if you've been collecting your... Uh... Yeah, because I saw special weapon ammo. I thought I remembered the rocket launcher. I thought it was a special weapon for some reason, but no, they, they would delineate it as, as rocket launcher ammo. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. So this is our main obstacle, finally being revealed. Ooh. We've got planes, but we can't go kill the processor right now because there is a storm brewing down south. Uh oh. That is not a euphemism. <laughs> a storm is a brewing, and we ain't just talking about the Boston Bruins. That was a dumb <laughs> joke. I apologize. I've heard worse. I've made worse. I have too, but you know I. That one felt a little labored, even for me. <laughs> you get a pass. I feel bad for making it. You've had enough good ones to get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what my jokes are. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, see, rocket launcher ammo right there. So yeah, so because of the storm, we're not able to fly? We are able to fly. We're not able to fly beyond a certain distance south because our plane will be struck by lightning and destroyed. And we'll die. That would be unfortunate. Yeah, that's no good. Preferably that would not happen. Indeed. And so instead we get in a gyrocopter, which is totally immune to lightning. That's a science fact. <laughs> yes, well-known fact. Fly your helicopters in a lightning storm, folks. I'm talking to a lot of people who have helicopters. Nah. That's the main LP crowd. So how are we supposed to, uh... How are we supposed to stop the, uh, the storm that is brewing? Well, we have no idea. Right now, all we can do is follow the advice of the natives and go to the temples. Do we shoot it? Maybe somehow that'll figure it out. Do we shoot the storm? Possibly. I don't want to spoil anything. I want to shoot the storm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how pretty sure that's how weather works. You know, like the weatherman uh, is actually a licensed hunter, and he determines. He kind of calls his shots. And if he shoots well, then the uh, then the weather is going to be what he says it is. But if he shoots poorly, then the weather is, you know, just whatever. And that's why people hate weathermen who never get anything accurate, is because they're such poor shots. Ah, oh, that sounds perfectly accurate. That's that's fact. I didn't just. M that's why they call it accu weather. Exactly. I didn't just make that up at all. <laughs> I have heard something about putting like dry ice in clouds, and that can change the weather. That's the thing. Uh, so what's what's the what's the alien weapon this go around? The starburst. Yes, indeed. We're going to kill the aliens with candy. It's a burst of flavor in your mouth. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous using actual real world real world candies to defeat your enemies. I know it's been the been the plot of a lot of movies. Yep. There's also a video game about it. There, there is a video. Dark game. and sky. Yep. 
I imagine, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe the goal is to give the, give the aliens diabetes. Hmm. Which actually... Yeah, overfeed them and yeah, feed them you, that way. You would think if they went to America, maybe that would do it because all Americans are fat. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> actually, you think it uh, would have started in Greece. <laughs> oh, burn. <laughs> Finally, something negative about a country besides America. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm, I am American. I have to make jokes about other people. I can't make them all about me. I made the first one about me. Now everybody else can suffer. Truly, yeah, we've been pretty deprecating about America, and when we get there, it's only going to be worse. I apologize for driving away your uh, your three Greek viewers. <laughs> Zero. Yeah, I don't know why it's called that. Hold on. Hold on, so you've got... Maybe you know why it's called that. You've got a German tank destroyer. You know, the Jagged Panther. You've got a German tank destroyer in Indonesia. And now now you have a Japanese fighter that is a seaplane. The, the Zero is not a seaplane. Yeah, there's, there's no explanation for why this is called a Zero. Come on. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Again, I'm mildly proud of the, uh, I'm mildly proud of the developers for using somewhat period accurate vehicles. Because the Zero was a plane in 1939. Yeah, I mean, Jabo Fett's gonna be mad that you called it period accurate, but. <laughs> Not very period accurate. Close enough, though. But it was a plane in, uh, what year are we in? 1941? Yes. Absolutely, it was a plane in 1941. That was the uh, it was the Japanese carrier-based fighter aircraft. It was re really effective at giving them air dominance in the early war. Yeah, I've heard the name Zero yeah. as a plane before. Yep. It's uh, ooh, the despite Java, all my ignorance, the Java Chris knife. Yeah, we got the blade two whole uh, stages ago. Haven't heard a thing about it since. Hmm. The Java Chris knife. The hand, the guy's pointing off that way again. Didn't they already use this puzzle? <laughs> Turns out that's their only animation. Uh, so that, that solution is not going to work this time. Uh, clever. Or is it? Yeah. Maybe he was pointing towards this altar. Indeed. So you could light the candle. Hey! Nope, he used the exact same puzzle twice. <laughs> but there's another wrinkle. Uh-oh. Second door. If you talk to him again, does he point the other direction? Nope. We just have to intuit that the other candle is the other solution. Well, obviously, he pointed at that one candle, which means that's the only one that has to be lit. If you light up two candles, then you're dumb. You don't deserve the Chris knife. Exactly. And I mean, famously, if you point at something, you've got three fingers pointing back at yourself. And back at himself was the other candle, so there you go. Well, technically, does, does pointing with the thumb count? Because then you have two things pointing. Hmm. The great mystery of life, along with what is the sound of one hand clapping. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I, you know what? I will after I finish this. So maybe he's maybe he's knife hand pointing, like he's pointing with all fingers. Like knife knife hand is definitely a dumb thing that they do in basic training for the military at trainees, and it's like. Yeah, they, they just, like, point with all of their fingers in the same direction. And they call it knife hand, because I... I, I don't know. <laughs> it's even more badass than the devil horns. Maybe he's knife handing. It's hard to say with the gigantic polygons that represent every character's hands. Yeah, so, so let me tell you about the sound of one hand clapping. Okay, fire away. So I, I had, a, uh, had a roommate. So, and he was, uh... Before I got into my current job in military stuff, I briefly worked as a... I briefly trained in Intel for a Chinese, Chinese Mandarin linguist. That didn't pan out because now I'm not doing that job. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, but do you speak Chinese? I speak a bit. I've, I've been about seven, close to eight years out of practice. But I can still speak a little bit of Mandarin. Still more bilingual than most. That's that's true. So, uh, I had this roommate. He was also learning Mandarin, but uh, he spent a lot of time on the on the computer watching watching videos. And he had a habit of 
clapping for videos when he thought they were good. Like, he watched TV shows, and he would clap for shows on his computer. So I'd just, like, be there sitting reading a book or something, and I'd see him, you know, start clapping at his, clapping at his monitor. Because that's what you do. Of course. But no, that, that wasn't it. Uh... He he clapped with one hand. Like apparently, if you you just like put your put your fingers into your palm, and that that makes the that's one hand clapping. He did it. He did it with both hands. <laughs> Rather than clapping the hands together, he clapped them separately. Rather than clapping the hands together, he clapped them by themselves separately. That is inefficient. That is I'll, inefficient. I'll say that. I had a friend with really long fingers who could uh, smack them against the palm of his hand and make a very accurate clapping sound. Yeah, this wasn't an accurate clapping sound. It was just strange. Yeah. Oh, I'd probably be remiss if I didn't ask you to give us a small sample of some Chinese that you know, like I did with uh, Skippy Granola. Oh, uh, Niman Hao, Wo Jiao Wan Xing. That sounds, uh, interesting. I will agree with that without understanding it. I said, hello, my name is Wan Xing. <laughs> that was my Japanese name, or my Chinese name. Why am I thinking Japanese? Because ah. I'm thinking of zeros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say proper names don't count, but if it's your own proper name, there we go. That was the name they gave me. Cool. My slave name. <laughs> well, this video just went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for that. I think it went up. <laughs> That's just my opinion. So yes, I can... It's one of those things where I can I can recognize Chinese if it's being spoken. Mm -hmm. I may not be able to really understand it, but uh, every time I every time I hear somebody speaking Chinese in a movie, I'm like, no, oh, that's Chinese, neat. <laughs> Did you ever watch, um... What is it? That remake that Keanu Reeves was in? Um, the Day the Earth Stood Still, I believe? Uh, yes. I don't remember when I saw that, but I believe they were speaking Chinese. Yeah, Keanu Reeves speaks really, really, really bad Chinese. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Wakani Bajitas. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> water Dao. Water Dao Gong Fu. <laughs> but he's a classic Asia-obsessed guy. He, what's, what's the word they use in Japan? Otaku. Yeah, or Japanophile. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, he almost played Spike Spiegel. <laughs> really? Yeah, I believe he's still under contract to play Spike Spiegel if they ever do make a Cowboy Bebop adaptation. That's, uh... I mean, I guess there's worse choices. Yeah, I mean, if it has to happen, it could yeah. happen to a worse guy, but it's not a good idea. Maybe maybe they're hoping that if they do pick Keanu Reeves for that, he'll be doing more of his uh, Bill and Ted persona. Instead of his, you know, world savior persona. I don't know if that's better or worse. Is this guy going to point to his left? <laughs> You'll be surprised to find out. I will. He's doing it right now, in fact, <gasps> behind the uh, text box. <laughs> there he is. There, yeah. And, and is it, <laughs> nope, nothing over there. Okay. There isn't even a door over there, so... Okay. The the circle has been broken. Mm-hmm. And this is the stupidest puzzle yet. Can you light all the flames? Ooh, look at Adam. He's a big boy. I don't know how this guy survives at the top of a mountain that's on fire with no plane to get down. Clearly, unlike the bugs, he is a friend with the volcano. He's on a lifelong hunger strike. He is Volcano Friend. <laughs> oh, we've also got all the things we've collected so far in this level. Even the things we gave to other people. Oh, yeah. But Adam hasn't figured out how to uh, combine knife yet? No, not yet. We're going to have to go to another temple to figure that out. How do I make knife? I have all of the ingredients for knife. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, no, I, I could see, I could see, I could see worse choices than Keanu Reeves. I mean, he's okay. I mean, he's not Nick, he's not Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I'm kidding. Nicolas Cage is fun to watch, though. He is fun to watch. I mean, the entire thing, the thing you have to appreciate about Nicolas Cage is he always gives like everything he has to every performance. Oh yeah. Like it's not good, but when you get Nick Cage, you know what you're getting. You're getting insanity. But he has such a he has such a dedication to his insanity. It's it's 
it's admirable. <laughs> yeah, he was close to a good actor before he went broke and took any role. Oh, so the... Is that, is that like the opposite of the Samuel Jackson effect? Yeah, kinda. Yeah, because Samuel Jackson just took any role because he's like, hell yeah, I love doing movies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nicholas Cage is like, hell yeah, I love money. <laughs> Didn't he like buy a castle or something like that? Yeah, I was gonna say he bought some famous bones or something. Yeah. He buys everything. It's one of those things you, you have to appreciate, like... Just, like, his performance in uh, Vampire's Kiss, like, he just sprints down the street screaming, I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! <laughs> like, no, his performance isn't good, but it's... It's full-throated and earnest, and that's... You just don't usually... You can't pay for that kind of earnestness, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he's probably the most famous person to ever dress up like a bear and punch a woman in the face. Uh... That sounds entirely possible. I wouldn't... Uh, <laughs> Probably. It, it sounds familiar, but I can't... I don't want to speak too soon. I can't put my finger on it. I, I know I've heard of that, but... Yeah, the more famous part of that movie is him screaming, Not the bees, as bees are poured onto his head. Oh, Wicker Man, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He dressed up as a bear and punched a woman in the face. Huh. Yeah, that's my favorite part. I haven't seen the movie. I just, I've just seen... Oh, I'm having a bit of trouble right now. <laughs> that, uh, ooh, that was a rough landing. Uh, it's more than a rough landing. Ooh, that was a... <laughs> that was more than a rough landing. I... I'm not sure if I would call that a landing, but... It, uh... Y you did land! Yeah, I'm very lucky I pinballed myself to safety. You did land, technically, and I mean... Could have been a lot worse. You know what? Any landing you can walk away from, good landing. Ultimately, yes. <laughs> And we're going to find out shortly that uh, I've gone to the wrong temple. Yeah, I was thinking you didn't really look like you knew where you were going, but this one looked familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know better than I do at this point. Uh, you know, I've got this excellent sense of direction, what can I say? That's where I was supposed to go. <laughs> the Great Elemental Temple. That's, that's so great. Except, yeah... The slight drawback of the uh, the gift of flight is that um, sometimes you go a little too far. You get overzealous, as I have. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just get carried away on on wings of fiberglass. Yeah. So I've teleported us to our uh, more familiar location of the um, that head structure that you like so much that we blew open with the grenades. Oh uh, yeah, I remember that one. That was nice. That was real nice. <laughs> What I had to do was, um, since I was so close to the beginning of stage two, I went back to the um, the beacon from stage one and teleported to uh, stage two, and then took the tunnel back to here. Oh yeah, that works. Cause uh, yeah, well, wouldn't uh, wouldn't the head at the at close to the start of stage three, the end of stage two? Mhm. Mm exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that that, that works. Hmm. Yeah. Still took quite a while though. In fact, first time I played the stage, it took me forever because I would get a plane, go to the temple that I needed to go to, and then accidentally explode the plane, and then have to figure out a way to get back to one of the beacons, and then, yeah. It was a process. <laughs> Took well over an hour. Up. Oh, is this guy gonna point? Yes. Yes! <laughs> the sacred lightning stone. Ooh, the, nat the nature will be in balance once more, and then, then we will still not stab the storm. Eh, maybe. Let's find out. Well, I guess if you're placing it in the lightning altar, then maybe you are stabbing the storm? It's like, ooh, nice thrust. Yeah, pretty good animation on that one. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's like riding the lightning. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, you would think if anybody was going to ride the lightning, it would be Black Adam. I mean, he's dressed for the part. That is true. He's already in his, uh, he's already in his metal, metal outfit. He's only a few letters away from being the Black Album. Nice! I like it. <laughs> Man, that's... <sighs> missed opportunity. Good job. Good job, pre-Rockstar. <laughs> They're even called Rockstar. What do you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, look at that. Look at that skybox. Yeah, we stabbed the storm away. Beautiful. The skybox actually looks pretty good. For an N64 game? 
I disagree. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you're watching a very low quality render as well. Just because so. just something is for an N64 game. Oh no, you monster, what was that for? Well, we are back in uh, Blackness Harbor, and it turns out we are back in sociopath mode as well. Oh. Does, like, do you get a special game over or something? Or just a regular game over that we haven't seen? We're gonna find out. Oh, yes, I guess we will. Yeah, our uh, humanity meter is at an all-time low. Yeah, it's, uh, you're looking a little, uh... Looking a little sociopathic there. Is this on the is this on the playthrough where you blew up the uh, blew up the what's it? Uh, no. This is back on the uh, the same playthrough we've been watching. I saved the game during the uh, transition there, so we're safe to murder everybody. Shouldn't you be shooting these houses with a starburst, or do you not have it yet? I just did shoot it with a starburst. No. Oh. That's what blew up that barracks there. Why is everything sparking strangely? Yeah, the screen goes dark, and the ground starts exploding when you've got uh, way too many people killed. And then when you finally max out the meter... Just top it off there. Yeah, using the weapon that I got for saving humans in the first place. You've gone and blown it, fly boy. Good job, McFly. More like McDoofus. <laughs> Another time travel story. Now you're toast. Toast! The bugs have won one. Ooh, and then the place just blows up. Okay. Yep. The number one thing people keep telling me is that if you max out your humanity meter, you get to keep playing the game. It's just more difficult. That's that is a lie. not the case That's at all. That's a lie. That's a lie. 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 So I wanted to finally put those rumors to rest. Okay. It does cause um, lightning strikes to happen continuously, but eventually one of them does hit you and instant kill you. Ah, okay. So it looks cool, but not. But it's not good, and you can't can't survive it. Yeah, not at all. Okay, yeah, that happens. It's it's valuable to know this. I appreciate you learning these things for science. Yeah. Plus, it's always fun to show off Daisy freaking out and the world ending. Yeah, I wouldn't go with a non-standard game over, but it it's not something. I mean, it pretty much is. Yeah, it's not something that you would see normally. Exactly. So I gotta ask: Are those little bugs in the sky? Are they like suicide bombing you when they die? Um, the smallest bugs, they suicide bomb you, but, um... Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about these... Those war scouts? Yeah, these flying jerks. Yeah, they crash into the ground, but the uh, explosion does not hurt you. Okay, I thought I thought maybe you taking car damage from an explosion or something like that. Yeah, it was probably just a coincidence of something else shooting me when it hit me. The Black Ness Airfield, is that like the Loch Ness? <laughs> We're a long way away from Scotland. We are a long way away from Scotland, but we had, uh... This place has just thrown me off kilter after last video. Mm hmm Yeah, you wouldn't know we're a long way away from Scotland the way everyone uses uh, British aphorisms all the time. Maybe they... Maybe DMA didn't really do their homework and they figured this was, uh... This was still colonial Indonesia. Yeah, well, DMA themselves are Scottish. Aren't they? And, uh, apparently all they know is Scottish slang. It's weird that they wrote Grand Theft Auto, like, two years after this. Why didn't, uh... Hmm. I think Grand Theft Auto had a bit of had a bit of Scottish slang. I could be wrong. Almost certainly, I'm pretty sure they shoehorned in some British characters into uh, the original Grand Theft Autos. Oh man, look how cool that guy is! He's got his he's got his foot on a chair. Yeah, he's a uh, general cool. I doubt he's a general. And his face is like entirely covered in darkness. Yeah, his portrait is downright foreboding. Seems like he's gonna turn against us. This dude is so cool. He's cool on the other side of the pillow. What he did there was he unlocked the um, aircraft factory, oh. which is the large structure um, back in the harbor. So now you have to go back. We don't have to. Um, all that happens is it's a big, um, big like uh, what do they call it? Aircraft hangar. Yeah. Sort of like the one we got the Jagged Panther from in the yeah. first place. Yeah. And it's got infinite uh, gyrocopters inside of it. Oh, nice. So I was halfway expecting you to say something like, we don't have to, we get to. <laughs> don't. B-25 Eagle! What? <laughs> no! You can't... <sighs> yes, you can. No, you can't. You can't <laughs> have... <sighs> it... mm. Ah, yes. Anachronisms. You know what? 
I would have been willing to give you the zero and the Yagged Panther being in the same place. But... Come on. Yeah, also that plane kind of sucks. It can only drop bombs straight down. Yeah, and you don't really have a good angle to uh, to see what... Yeah, it's very hard to aim them. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that being a bit difficult. So, yeah, back to the trusty old gyrocopter. Old trusty. I mean, the gyrocopter's been an excellent... An excellent... Uh, excellent method of travel in N64 games since Pilot Wings, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Skippy actually pointed that out in the last, uh... Stuff, <laughs> level, uh Pilot Wings doesn't have any planes, which freaked me the hell out. I hear Pilot and Wings, and I think planes. Well, I think, uh... I think they had some planes. Maybe it was just planes that you flew in, not planes that you flew in the SNES game. Yeah, he said the SNES game had no planes, but not... 64 one. Yeah, no, there was there was no planes in N64. Uh, Gyrocopter was it, and every once in a while you get to hop in it and shoot missiles at uh, Mecha Hank <laughs> or Mecha Hawk. That was it. Yeah, because uh, one of the one of the pilots you could pick was Hawk, and he was this big guy. But there was this evil scientist who made like this giant robot version of Hawk. It was that's awful. Similar to uh, Black Adam. There being a Black Adam. That's... Hmm, makes you think. Makes you think. And these were both supposed to be uh, launch titles for the N64, this and um, Pilot Wings. Pilot Wings actually was, though. Yeah. So may no people harvested, seriously? Huh. Look at you. Yeah, I'm surprised myself. I only killed them all myself. Maybe maybe these two games were secretly plotted by the same people, kind of like how every single plotline Blizzard does is some form of corruption. <laughs> Like, it seriously is. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> what Nintendo did when they uh, started developing for the Nintendo 64 was they assembled what they literally called the Dream Team. Oh. Which was different groups of um, developers, yeah. including Rare and DMA and a couple different developers that I am not familiar with. One of them came up with Pilot Wing 64, one of them came up with Body Harvest. Maybe they all had uh, Nintendo interference telling them to uh, put the same notes into their uh, stories. Huh. Yeah, it could be. Maybe they were going for some sort of a uh, unity of messaging. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I don't know. I imagine it was the same Nintendo exec saying, hey, everyone do this exact same thing. Because, I mean, that... Well, because Nintendo, I don't, I don't know if they were explicitly going for, uh, going for more... More, uh, what's the word adult-friendly fear at this point, like... Supposedly they were. Weren't you saying at first they were like, oh, it's not violent enough. Ah, oh, too violent! Yeah, precisely. Supposedly they wanted to get rid of their kid-friendly image, as they do every console generation, but especially at the Nintendo 64. Mmm... Yeah, because remember they, they had Conquer to begin with, and they changed it to, uh... Conquer's bad for a... Yeah, well, Conquer was actually one of the later, um... 64 games... Well, I remember they they Conquer was one of the ones that was uh, in development almost from the beginning because I remember when they did uh, Diddy Kong Racing, Rare put out a bunch of their characters that eventually popped up in different places. Like they had Banjo eventually showed up in Banjo Kazooie. Hell yeah, he did. They had Conquer, who he was he was a different character at the time. But Conquer, I remember you know reading all these old issues in Nintendo Power. Conquer was oh, I'm trying to remember what the original name for it was. Uh, there was a different working title for Conquer at one point, and it was a it was a different uh, it was it was a very different theme game. Yeah, I've heard about that story. It was originally another one of Rare's sort of generic open world 3D mm -hmm. yeah, exploration and, collect a thoughts. And, that, and that's what it was working towards to begin with. But uh, yeah, it, it turned out differently for better or for worse. I think for better. I got myself a cartridge of uh, Bad Fur Day, mm. and despite how really immature it is, <laughs> and I really would not like that kind of humor anymore, it's so funny. Like, that game is really, really funny. You wouldn't think it would hold up, but it's it really does. You know, it's, it's nice that, uh, and you're right, I wouldn't think that it would hold up, because uh, it's a lot of immature humor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we've all gotten sick to death of Family Guy these days, and it's basically Family Guy ten years before Family Guy. But it, it really holds up. Is it, though? 
I mean, it's better than Family Guy. Is there supposed to be a is there supposed to be a boat here? Or are you? What this is? This is um, if your plane gets shot down in that exact spot by the jellies, mm -hmm. you can uh, swim over to this little exit area and um, find your way back to safety. Oh, okay. That's the only reason it's there. Nice. There's two or three spots like that in this uh, huge southern part of Java. Mm -hmm. And um, the first time I went to this processor, I got shot down like five times and had to oh. climb my way back up to the top of the mountain and then uh, head back to blackness, get a new plane and fly back. Because that processor I, is much more difficult than I made it look. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Because it was, you were going through the Death Star Trench there. It was looking a little dicey. Yeah, it takes at least two passes, and it's Ooh. it's very scary, very dangerous. And this one looks like it's uh, this one looks like it's a little little chefty too. Yeah, this is dangerous as well. This is a uh, part of the upward trajectory of the difficulty in this game. Yeah, uh, do you take fall damage? I'm almost positive that um, Adam himself does not take fall damage. The plane certainly does. So he's got like that. Uh impact compensation that's so hot in first-person shooters these days. I think you're only hurting yourself there. <laughs> yeah, I was. The uh, aiming reticle is weird when you're this close to the ground. The alien's like, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. Yep, that's the alien's voice. And then you shot him in the face. True story. Hell yeah. <laughs> so they put the, uh, the shield generator in a nice little crevice here. Very hard to get to without destroying your plane as I have. Yeah, I, yeah. All you have to do is take out this dude with the uh, starburst or whatever. Yeah, what you have to do is kill the four, uh... The four side the four beats. missile launchers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, otherwise, uh... Doesn't look like he's taking any damage from all that. That's no... That's not... That's not too hot. No, not at all. You're getting shot from every which direction. Yeah, I mean, normally it would do twice as much damage, but we're just outside of range of one of its two guns. Yeah. Which was lucky. Luckily, after you take out these four, you get the uh, you get the what's it back, right? Alpha command. Or am I, or am I misremembering how this game goes? <laughs> yeah, once you kill the shield generator, uh, alpha command shows up, and so does the boss. Then you fight the boss in the hovercraft. <laughs> Is this hovercraft fight any different? Or well, the starburst haven't talked much about it. Um, it's disappointing damage-wise compared to um, the rocket launcher and the tri spinner at that. But you can control the projectile as it's being fired. Oh, so like you can you can aim it. Yeah, you can move it around while it's in the air. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's pretty neat. But yeah, here comes Alpha Command. Dun, 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 dun. No way, different music sting. I apologize. I'm just trying to think of Underdog's theme song. <laughs> Here he comes to save the day. Normal Adam <laughs> is on his way. <laughs> <laughs> so And the boss. He I don't remember that electric thing last time. Hmm. Is that, is that new, or am I, am I just misremembering? Well, this is a completely different boss. Okay, that would be why. Can you guess what this uh, three-headed scorpion is named? Is it... And remember, it's a uh, reference to either the Bible or Hell. I was going to say Kerberos. You are correct. <laughs> I figured. I mean, as soon as you point out three-headed, I'm like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> what yeah, I what it could it be? <laughs> <laughs> Yep, part of the overly serious theme of this game. Ain't I... Except the bugs are literal demons, I guess. So now I, I have to wonder, is that like, is Kerberos what, what humanity named it? Or is that what the bugs named it? That is hard to say. All I know is that it's a name that appears in uh, the boss select menu once we have all the um, artifacts for this stage, which we do. Or is it perhaps what Black Adam named it? Hmm. Yeah, he seems to be a leader of the bugs in some unknowable capacity. Hmm. Hmm. Really makes you think. This game is surprisingly thought-provoking. I wasn't I wasn't ready for this level of analysis of an N64 game, but here we are. <laughs> no one was. Like, maybe this is maybe this is secretly one of the uh, one of the greats of our time, and we just never realized it because nobody ever beat this game. 
I realized it even though I only got like two and a half levels in. One and a half level in, that is. You would realize it was secretly the game. Yeah, I love the hell out of this game. I played it for hundreds of hours, not exaggerating at all. You just kept getting stuck on that one part. I kept getting stuck on every part. <laughs> there was only one stage that I beat one try in this game. Oh my. Yeah. Well then again, yeah, I, I guess I cheated when I did it, so I got no I got nothing to say. <laughs> I also cheated when I did it. I played on the IG profile with all the uh, beneficial cheats active. I was gonna say I used a game shark. <laughs> oh, that's more cheating than me. <laughs> exactly. We all have our moments. So it looks like you you blew up part of him, was that like his whole body or Well, what happened was um once we killed all the core heads, it launched one of its head and then it regrew with the center head. We killed the center head, now it's oozing blood all over the place. But we can't hurt the body until we kill the flying head. That's not a chain gun. That's not a chain gun, it accidentally um, played the wrong uh, gun name. Uh, I, was gonna, I was gonna say, I was a little confused there for a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, like, I thought the same thing on, that, I was playing the level. That's not how chain guns work, what is this? <laughs> this is the chain gun. <laughs> okay, now it makes there more sense. Go. Now it's correct. We're going to see what that weapon actually is in a second here. I'm going to reuse a Doom joke and say that now Kerberos is doing the chain gun cha-cha. <laughs> One, two, cha-cha-cha. So what is this? This is the... Pretty sure we've seen the name of it before. The, yep, the laser missile. I remember that. Hell yeah. Probably the best weapon. I don't think there's any lasers in that, but... Not at all. They're, they're not correct. Yeah, and they also misspelled laser, but you know what? Whatever. Maybe, maybe it's different. Maybe, maybe L A Z R is different from L A S R. Yeah, it's some kind of sci-fi version of a laser. A laser. Imagine I use quotation fingers. <laughs> laser. Laser. That's the name of my band. <laughs> it's a straw bad joke. <laughs> Ooh, broke the 200,000 mark. Look at you heading up in the world. I think we're now ranked um, number four in the overall score points <laughs> for this game. <laughs> you should, you could submit this to High Score Central, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, there is an in-game uh, high scoreboard, <laughs> and we're on it. Nice. And that was Java. I'm feeling pumped now, all this caffeine. Thank you for joining me, Scruffy. It was a hell of a good time. We're going to America. See you next time.